I was born in Australia, but I lived in Hong Kong for many years. My business in Asia was successful, and I became rich. After twenty years, I decided to visit my home in Canberra. On my way from Hong Kong to Canberra, I stayed one night in Sydney. I had a friend who lived in the city of Sydney, and I wanted to see him again. His name was David Lee, and he had been my friend for many years. We had written many letters to each other, but recently I have not received any news from him. David had never worked. David was a superstitious man. He believed that luck or magic could make things happen in his life. He spent most of his time reading strange books. Most of the books were about occult philosophy. I taught them books about magic. As soon as I arrived in Sydney, I sent a message to David's house. The message said, "I am staying in Sydney for three days. May I visit you?" Dante R surprised me. An hour later, he sent a servant to my hotel with a reply. "Come to my house at once, my dear friend," he wrote. "Come this evening. You'll remember the house, I'm sure." It was my father's home. I live in a towel at one end of the house. You don't have to ring the bell or knock on the door. I'll tell the servants to go to bed, and I'll leave the front door of the car open. Come up the stairs immediately. I'll be waiting for you. Please come soon. I rode in a cab to Don Quixote's house. That evening the weather was stormy. A strong wind was blowing, and cold rain was falling. I had forgotten that Sydney is cold and wet in winter. I only remembered the sunshine, not the wind and the rain. David's house was near the river. It was an ugly two-story building that was made of bricks. There was a tower at one end. The house was surrounded by a garden of many trees and beautiful plants. But now it was winter, and there were no leaves on the trees or flowers on the plants. The driver stopped his cab near the car. Although the front door was only five yards away, I became soaked with rain as soon as I stepped out of the cab. I ran to the door of the car and turned the handle. The door was unlocked. And I opened it. One small light dimmed on the stairway, and I could not see clearly. I climbed the stairs slowly, touching the wall with my fingers. At the top of the stairs, there was another door. I opened it and went into a room that was lit with another small lamp. Emily came forward, held my hand, and shook it. She was wearing a long silk coat and soft leather slippers on her feet. His clothes were old-fashioned and strange. We looked at each other. And I was shocked. I had not seen William for many years. My friend had changed a lot. He had once a handsome man, but now his hair was grey and his face was very pale. There were many lines around his eyes and mouth. Dantio looked like a thin old man, but he was not older than fifty. His large and bright eyes shone strangely in the satin vein. Welcome, my friend. Please sit down, he said. Gantia offered me some wine and a cigar, and we talked a little. But I am afraid that our conversation was not very interesting. Meeting friends after many years can be difficult, and it can make you sad. Maybe David guessed my thoughts. Man, son, quali friend, I am not as I was. He said, "I tried to make a joke." Your Latin hasn't improved, I replied. My friend smiled. Latin is a dead language. And I'm a dead man," he said. Then his smile disappeared, and he said, "I'll die very soon." I did not know what to say. I smoked my cigar and drank my wine. We were both silent for several minutes. Outside, the wind had stopped blowing. I wanted to leave the house. Suddenly, I heard a strange noise. Pop, pop, pay, pop. Oh, it was the sound of someone or something. Knocking, was the sound coming from one wall of the palace? Pop, 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 pop. The sound was not quick or loud. It was not the sound of someone knocking loudly in a door. The soft tapping sounded like someone sending a signal, a message. Dantio had forgotten me. He was staring at the wall. There was a strange expression on his face. My friend looked excited and afraid. His eyes shone brightly. I, I see that you are very tired. I said, "I'll leave. May I visit you tomorrow?" 
Dante pained his head and looked at me. Please stay, he said. There's no problem. Nobody is there. I'm sure you'll be fine. I said. 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 There's no problem. Nobody is there. He walked to a small window and opened it. I had not noticed the window earlier. Look, he said. I walked across the room and looked out of the window. I could see nothing except the light of a street lamp and rain falling. No one was standing outside. There was no one near the wall of the tower. Please don't leave me, said Miles. I must tell you a story. You're the only name that I can tell it to. Will you listen to my story? I wanted to go back to my hotel. Miles, his hush and his strange manners, made me feel uncomfortable. I think that I am a sensible and intelligent man, but I felt unhappy and frightened in that old tower room. However, I did not want to upset my old friend. Very well, I said. I'll stay and listen. James poured me another drink and offered me another cigar. Then he began to tell his story. I didn't move into this house until my father died, David said. That was ten years ago, when I was about thirty years old. When my father died, I got his business, his property, and his money. Before his death, I lived in a large apartment building in Castle Hill, said Dantia. Maybe you know all that area of Sydney. Castle Hill was a fashionable area fifty years ago, but now it is run down and neglected. The owner of the apartment building rented out many of its small rooms. The walls of the rooms were thin. You could almost put your hand through them. I was lucky. Saint Pierre went in. The rent was cheap, and I had a large room in the building. No one visited me, and no one disturbed me. I could study my books quietly. I lived happily in Windtown Hill. One morning, as I was leaving the apartment, I saw a young girl, Dempia continued. It was a warm day in June. She was wearing a white dress and a still hat. There were brightly colored flowers and ribbons around the brim of the hat. Then I saw the girl's face. It's difficult to find words to describe it. Her face was strange and beautiful. I had never seen such a beautiful face before. Without thinking, I lifted my hat and bowed. She looked at me with smiling brown eyes, but she didn't speak. I knew that she was pleased to see me, but she didn't smile. She went into the house and shut the door. I stood and stared at the closed door. Would I see her again? Should I speak to her? Would she speak to me? Maybe you think that these are the thoughts of a much younger man, so don't be off. And maybe you're right. But these feelings are new to me. I'd never been in love before. I'd spent too many years with ghosts and too little time with people. Now I believe that you're my only friend. Soon, none of this will matter. I don't feel fearless when I talk to you. Blanquier stopped speaking for a few moments, then he went on with his story. The next day, I waited in my apartment. For many hours, I stared out of the window. I watched the street, but the girl didn't come out of the building. I didn't know her name, so I couldn't ask anyone about her. That night, I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I sat by the window again and waited. Then suddenly, she came out of the apartment building, and I went out too. But when I reached the street, she had disappeared. I didn't see where she had gone, so I walked around the neighborhood. At last, I saw her in a narrow street. We smiled at each other. She recognized me. I'm sure of that. From that time, I often ran out from the building at night. She always wore the square hat with the brightly colored flowers and ribbons on its brim. I didn't follow her. I was always in the middle of the street. I was always in the middle of the street. I was always in the middle of the street. I was always in the star hat with the brightly colored flowers and ribbons on its brim. I didn't follow her. I simply walked around the neighborhood and hoped to see her again. At last, I went to the landlady, replied. She's a servant in this house. She lives here because her parents are dead. She works for me. She cooks and cleans the building. 
I also sent her to buy a few things for her. She's a good girl. 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 She works for me. She cooks and cleans the building. I also sent her to buy our food. She lives at the top of the house. Wet. Her room is next to yours, but at the top of the other staircase. And then things yet. Oh, my friend, I wish that I'd never heard that piece of information. Gampier said to me, "The girl's room was next to mine. She was on the other side of the thin wall. At night, I put my hand on the wall and I thought of her. Was her bed by the wall? Was she sleeping only a few inches from my hand?" I couldn't study because of the girl," said David. "My mind wasn't clear. I only thought about the girl. I couldn't study my books about the occult." I'd never wanted to marry," Don Pierre went on. "I'd never wanted a wife and children. I was only interested in learning. And I could never marry a poor, uneducated servant girl. My father would never have given his permission. All my money came from my father. If he had stopped giving me money, well, what happened next?" I asked. My friend looked at me sadly. I stopped waiting for her, and I stopped watching her. I only studied. I spent all my time reading my books, but one hot night I couldn't sleep. Thoughts were racing around and around in my mind. I thought again and again about the beautiful girl. I wanted to be with her. She was only on the other side of the wall. I tapped on the wall. I tapped very gently three times. Tap, tap, tap. I tapped again. Tap, tap, tap. Then I felt serious. I was behaving like a boy who was in love for the first time. I got out of my bed and began to study my books. I was reading a strange book, Dampier said. It was a book of occult philosophies by Necromantis. You would call it a book of magic and superstition. In his book, Necromantius describes how to be a fortune teller. Necromantius also wrote about strange and terrible things that happened three times. When these things happened three times, death would come. Necromantius called this a fatal trial. I believe that a fatal trial had happened to you. Why? I asked. What happened? While I was alone reading that strange book by Necromantius, said the emperor, I heard a sound. It was a soft tapping sound. It came from beyond the wall. It was the answer to my own signal. Tap, but. If tap one way near cell, need she not see my tap? But I knew that the pretty servant girl was sending a message to me. She wanted me to come to her. I ran to the wall and tapped my signal again. Tap, 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 tut. But after that, there was silence. She didn't reply to any of my other signals. I listened for many hours, but I heard nothing more. For many days after this. I looked for the girl, Dantia said, but I never saw her again. I tried to forget her. One evening, I went to bed early because I was very tired. In the middle of the night, I awoke suddenly. I heard a soft sound. I opened my eyes and saw it. I heard a soft tapping on the wall beside the bed. In a few moments, it was repeated. Tap, bell, dee, set, set. Tap, but. Tap, dentine, take us. I was going to reply to the signal, but I stopped. The girl hadn't replied to my last messages. I would not reply to her mail. Danchier drank a little wine and then continued. I lay in bed listening, he said, but I didn't reply. At last, I must have slept. When I awoke, it was late and I felt tired. I needed some fresh air, so I left my apartment. The landlady was outside my door. Oh, Mister David, she said, "Have you heard the terrible news?" My heart began to beat quickly. My voice shook, and I answered, "What? What news?" I asked her. My poor niece was sick for a week. The landlady replied, "Didn't you know? I'd seen you watching her for a week." The landlady replied, "Didn't you know? 
I'd seen you watching her. Didn't you know that she was ill? I shocked, said Don Peel. I didn't know what to say. Yes, I had looked at the girl, but I'd never spoken to her. My mind was always full of thoughts of my books and thoughts of her. How much time had passed since I had seen the girl? A few days. A week? I couldn't remember. And how's your niece now? I asked the landlady. I'm sorry, sir. The landlady, do you want? I'm sorry, sir, the landlady replied. She was very ill last night, and I took care of her. The poor girl made only one request. She wanted her bed to be moved. She wanted her bed to be beside the wall. The wall next to your room. I asked dance. The wall next to your room. The wall next to your room. The wall next to your moved. She wanted her bed to be beside the wall. The wall next to your room. So, we moved her bed. This made her feel happier. A poor thing. Then she touched the wall and smiled. A few hours later, she died. The expression on Dantier's face was terrible. There were tears in his eyes as he continued his story. When I heard this news, I nearly died too, said my friend. I didn't know what to say. What had I done? I had sent my thoughts to the girl, and she had answered. I had not called out in words. I had used occult philosophy magic to send her a message. Dantier was silent for a few minutes. Then he went on. A few days later, I heard of my father's death, said Dantier sadly. I left the apartment and came to his house. This house. It's been my home since then. I've been waiting here in this town for ten years. I've been waiting for a visitor. I wasn't expecting to see you, but your visit wasn't a surprise. Nicronantes told us how sounds are repeated three times. You've heard my story. You must decide if my story has happened because of a single thought. I've heard the talking twice before. The first time, I tried to find the person who made the noise. The second time, many signals were sent to me, but I didn't reply. Now you heard the tapping too. That was the third time. The final job is complete. I stood up and shook Pampier's hand. Your friend knew that I understood his sadness and pain. He pressed my hand with his fingers in his mouth. I said good night. There was nothing more to say.